Welcome back to the Stuff Word of a Podcast. Your host, B. Quan Chi, here. Before we get started, I'd like to say the best way to support me and the channel is to like, comment, and subscribe. Whether that be here on YouTube, we can follow on Twitter to catch uh, fun tweets and some updates, as well as follow on Twitch where I do uh, game streams, which those streams are also on YouTube as well, uploaded VODs. I've been trying to have maybe more of a theme or just kind of a genre with my streaming. It kind of falls between like retro maybe a little bit obscure to indie to it's pretty much whatever but um yeah just kind of be playing like nintendo stuff too so be kind of experimenting and doing some fun stuff with that but those get uploaded i do stream twice a week uh, thursdays and fridays we've got a very special podcast for this week one of the life update is that i officially cut cable from my life as in cable TV, I mentioned like last week, you know, um, concerns with rent going up and stuff like that. And not that I'm like in that dire situation, just going to review my bills and stuff like that. And a lot of times TV, like live TV would be just like background noise for the most part. There's been shows I've been wanting to catch and stuff like that too, but kind of looking and pretty much now saving $80 a month just for cutting cable TV. Cause I have like Netflix, I have Hulu and stuff like that. And I'm playing around too. I got one of those um, antennas, and I guess I have more updated ones because you always think of the, the old rabbit ears at uh, the age of myself, but like whatever old school antenna. But they have this nice one I uh, bought. It kind of looks like a almost like a big old mouse pad, but it says like the best way to get reception is to put it in the windows because I guess there's also like really strong antennas uh, depending on like where you're at or if you're outdoors and stuff like that. I said, oh, you can have this on a table, um, in the ceiling. Probably the best is to put it out the window. Oh, that just works with my setup. I got that to get a lot of um, local broadcast. I've been playing around because I do have the smart TV with the Roku uh, built in. And I think it went kind of similar. Like you can get like Roku sticks or devices or Amazon Fire or Google. The Google one, which I'm not too familiar with. But there's actually some pretty decent free live tv stuff i guess one called like the roku channel and they have like a bunch of like uh channels in a sense quote unquote a lot of it's pretty missed like kind of like old tv shows and stuff like that but then also some game show ones like if it, oh they have like a deal no deal one like oh if i just want background noise i can they just pretty much stream a bunch of episodes of that some really old ones i think when that show came off the air but then they have one based on overall game shows too and then a family feud one but it feels like just family feud compilations because they feel like they'll show full episodes like these like go through it and they have like um like funny moments or uh one's just focusing on the fast money at the end of the show and then this one called uh pluto tv which i think is on like streaming live tv that's free it's pretty cool too i think that's one with like kitchen nightmares ones and like an mtv one and it was surprised they have a Comedy Central channel on Pluto TV. And it's not like uh, the cable broadcast. It's just a bunch of the shows syndicated, like South Park, a lot of South Park, Reno 911, Chappelle's show and stuff like that. Went, oh, that's cool. That works. I was actually a little surprised to see, or at least here, like when I was watching South Park, I was in the drop F-bomb. like, fuck. I went, oh, it's uncensored. I'm not sure if that's with like every show or... I like get to retain all the uncensored material, but oh, it's uncensored South Park. And it's like one of the things like you don't get to see the latest episodes, but I think those fall. I did get rid of Paramount Plus, so I'm not sure if I'll get that back again now that I'm saving a little bit of money. But also with that, I was uh, looking at other ones. Not that I'm jumping back into getting live TV again, but I was looking at the Hulu TV, the YouTube TV, and stuff like that. It actually seemed pretty good. Like they were cheaper than what I was spending on traditional cable and in those packages even have a lot more channels and better channels like things that more appeal to me i feel like the hulu one might be more of the one i would lean towards because it includes hulu disney plus and espn plus which i don't care about sports that much like um because even with the add-ons it's probably like saving me like over 25 dollars a month or more with getting better channels and there's also sling tv which Seems a little bit more on a cheaper side, but doesn't have quite as good a selection. But it has like the essentials too, so I think. Hmm. But if it wasn't for like the Hulu add-ons, like Hulu and Disney Plus, I will lean to it. But I think I'm just gonna take a big break too from TV, 
just because I just want to like see how this affects my monthly bills and income and stuff like that. So I don't. So if I like save more, I can like pay down more debt or stuff like that. One day I would like to actually own uh, instead of rent, but we'll see. That's kind of a pipe dream down the way. But I'm not sure if other people have similar like thought processes or advice or whatever. Like oh, I, because I, I, I always feel like every year you hear more people like, oh, I'm cutting off cable. Like I don't don't watch cable anymore. I don't have a cable box. And it's funny because I just realized like after I, I returned the equipment because. Um, it's convenient because they have like stores um, close by, at least close to me. So I had to worry about like getting a box and packing uh, equipment. I'm like, oh, I just dropped it off and then scan confirm. I got the confirmation email. But I realized the spot where I had the cable box, I relied on that as a clock. It's so like, oh, I had to get a clock real quick. Just because, you know, when you like killing time before work or whatever, it's good to see a clock. Even though I can always look at my phone, but just having that clock there. But yeah, just a little life change. And one thing I wanted to talk about is Disney in Florida. And I'm not going to get too much in detail. I just kind of saw it on Twitter and it trending and stuff like that. But I know Florida had that big bill. I forget what it was actually called, but it's been known as the Don't Say Gay Bill. It kind of prevents uh, which um, teachers or I'm not sure like the death. At least I know teachers like to discuss like gay even like gender stuff like transgender and stuff like that which really sucks and the big thing about it is like disney's really big in florida like that disney city world i'm not sure how many like employees uh, orlando i think is that where disney world is i think orlando sounds right but there was a lot of walk up from employees i'm not sure if they have like studios there or what but i know like florida is a big disney state I know California is too with uh, their theme parks as well, but there was a big walkout. I think what kind of really caught my attention is that like Disney Plus uh, made this like post about like supporting, I guess like stories and LGBT and stuff like that. I saw that because I do follow an account on Twitter, um, Poorly Aged, I think Poorly Aged Things is what it's called. It's like, like, no, you don't. And that's the thing with Disney is I feel like they really hold back or they really don't like get into LGBT plus whatever. I, I, I'm kind of bad like including all the acronyms now because I remember it was just four back in the day LGBT or GLBT but yeah because I feel like they don't and when they do they cut back because it's a big deal in China and Russia. <laughs> well not to get too much into Russia at the moment because what's been going on. But especially like China, like they won't have this in the movie because it will get like banned or, or whatever from uh, in China, and they want the money from the China um, box office and stuff like that. Because if you remember uh, the movie Onward, I think this was before the movie was released. You know, it was like an article like on Buzzfeed, like oh, this character is like a lesbian and stuff like that. At first, like official like out uh, LGBT representation in a Disney movie. And afterwards, it's here to be a big disappointment because I think it was just like a very small character and like maybe one ad lib line, whatever, which was easily edited out in other countries and stuff like that. But it feels like there's not much representation in terms of storytelling and stuff like that. Not that I watch a show, I've I'm, I'm been meaning to look into it as well. But the show Owl House, I think there's like two characters, like they really had like. Oh, it could be like a lesbian couple, even though, you know, it's, you know, teenage and stuff like that, but still have like some reputation, even like a little like teenage romance. You see that all the time with like traditional TV shows. I don't know why I say traditional, but like, oh, boy has crush on girl, girl has cr crush on boy, they go on a date, but you don't see that too much when it comes to uh, same sex and stuff like that. Whether it be two guys, two girls or whatever. Because so, we didn't bring it up because I feel like I'm not like too obvious, but I am gay. And I do put that like my social media and stuff like that too. And I kind of, I was a 90s kid, like 90s, early 2000s. And I kind of feel like if I had more knowledge in terms of this representation or those kind of discussions and stuff like that, like go, going back to like a don't say gay bill in Florida, that I kind of wish I had that as a kid just so I kind of know what I felt instead of like 
I guess being like ashamed of it or something. It's kind of like weird with my growing up because it didn't really have that like, hey, you're not supposed to be gay or hey, you know, homophobia or anything that I never really had that with family friends or anything like that. Although I kind of also grew up in a time like we see movies and TV shows and stuff like that where we had the homoerotic humor and a lot of times it'd be like gross or shocking and stuff like that. Like, I don't know, I kind of think like, not that I've seen, really seen much of the American Pie movies, but that kind of like movies that are rated, that get the unrated DVDs or whatever, like the college movies. It's like two guys kissing, gross, ew, don't do that, uh and stuff like that. But two girls kissing, like if they're two hot girls, that's the thing. And then, oh, that's nice. Stuff like that. So I feel like a lot of like gay stuff growing up was just like, huh, that's gross, that's funny. Oh my God, can you believe two guys kissing? I think, again, that would have helped me just know, like, hey, that's normal to feel that way, you know. Because I think that would have uh, saved me a bunch of heartache and pain and stuff like that, too. And I'm not sure what the consequence. I haven't looked too much into that uh, Florida bill, like, what if the teachers did talk about it or what did other students, if they talked about it. I'm sure it's out there. I think it's one of those things, too, if, like, if I with a kid and then later – me that self discovery like, hey i'm different and hey i'm gay or uh, transgender whatever and then i found out, like hey my parents supported these bills that hey that don't talk about this don't teach this don't support this don't support lgbt then i would probably have a problem with my parents later in life so i wanted like if kids uh teenagers may find themselves in that situation because i think that's kind of like heartbreaking when you find and hear these stories of like hey these parents are really homophobic like kicking kids or te- more, maybe more teenagers out but i'm not sure like finding out that they're gay or them coming out or even worse like uh therapy like the electroshock or whatever I, I, the conversion th- therapy that's what i'm thinking of the word conversion therapy and stuff like that because it gets kind of scary out there and it's you feel like it unfortunate even though I also feel like this day and age, like we come a long way in terms of LGBT rights and stuff like that. But then it's in hearing stuff like, are we step taking a few steps back, especially with other groups as well? Like, uh, not that I get too much into this, but talking about a lot of things going on with women's rights, with uh, birth control. I'll say that because a few words aren't too YouTube friendly, but not that I'm a big channel or anything. But yeah, it's just crazy and. I think what going back to like Disney, I just feel like they have a more powerful voice when it comes to it. Or like, I know that's like people like don't, don't get involved in politics and laws and stuff like that. But if you look into Disney and why it takes so long for uh, some content to become public domain, and they're a big part of that. Like they don't want Mickey Mouse to be public domain, and they influence the laws on that as well. And it's not just like, hey, do what I want you to do. Like it affects my group. So support it, even if others don't. It's more like doing the right thing, uh, treating people you know, equally and things like that. And again, what we have in the world today is different than what we had five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So I think it's important to have these discussions, these awareness, and not just be in ignorance, because I think a lot of times ignorance can be in hate and things like that. And I don't know, then people like feel like, oh, I should hate this, and then they realize they are this, and they hate themselves, and go through like a painful journey in life, whether it be gay, lesbian, trans, or whatever. So that's kind of like my two, two and a half cents about it, but just something I kind of want to talk a little bit on the podcast. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is a little bit about anime, and I've been kind of thinking, kind of like how people complain about this and that about anime, like more like tropes and stuff like that. Like how anime can get really repetitive in terms of like repeating the same things or like flashbacks and stuff like that too. I think like the most infamous one, at least for me, is Inuyasha where like so many episodes flashback to when the character Kikyo pins Inuyasha to a tree with an arrow. I think like that. I feel like Naruto is really bad with that too. Like they have flashbacks and a lot of times with flashbacks or of the same episode and... Sometimes it could be like the English dub or like catchphrases and stuff like that. But I just like one thing that's been kind of an anime trope that kind of gets on my nerves is when you have a character that's very like snarky and like above people and kind of put somebody down, like 
some good examples is that one uh, recent season of uh, My Hero Academia with that one student in the other class was like all talking things up. So it's kind of like, it's really obnoxious because you feel like in some of these animes, um, I haven't caught up too much with it too, but maybe One Punch Man and even like uh, Demon Slayer, like the the above, like they have like, like this elitist kind of like, oh, I'm so strong, so better than you or whatever. And a lot of times like, hey, we're in the same situation, like are heroes fighting crime, fighting evil, are people slaying demons, fighting demons. Also uh, Black Clover too, like the early episode, that one snobby guy. Like, don't like the snobby characters because a lot of times, like, hey, in the same boat. Although I could get some things too, like, hey, it kind of like adds this little rivalry. Or when they get the comeuppance and, like, you know, the underdog like takes them down, it's more satisfying. But things like shows like Demon Slayer, or, uh, One Punch Man, and stuff like that, it's like, dude, we're in the same boat. Like, it's not colorful. Especially like if it keeps going, like, hey, they get the one up and they still act this way over and over. And. I don't know, it just kind of gets on my nerves, like, now that I'm kind of, like, noticing it. Not that it, like, ruins uh, these series for me or anything like that. But I feel like one character that did that really well is Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z. Because that makes sense, because he's, like, the villain, so he wants to, like, put down Goku, like, he's the prince of all Saiyans and stuff like that. And even in that uh, arc early in Dragon Ball Z, like, he almost took down Goku and barely skated by. And then I think just because I like that about Vegeta is that it, it shows a lot of character development. Like, kind of like in the next saga with uh, Namek and Frieza. It's kind of like we, we have to work with these guys just because out of necessity. It kind of even kind of trickled back to um, a Ford in a sense. Uh, to like the Android saga, the Cell saga, where it's like, hey, it's like I'm, I want to surpass you, Goku, but or Kakarot, as you would say. But kind of like realizing like how important like not just really I think feel corny just to say oh they have friends but just to have like allies or comrades or whatever you want to call it so kind of like depending on them to I guess be like backup and stuff like that especially like Dragon Ball Super gets more into that so I feel like Vegeta gets very humbled kind of very versus like the top person the strongest of all time and stuff like that to relying on others or to the point that I think he sees Goku as a really good like friend, even though it's kind of like more of a rival and stuff like that kind of like help build him up and push him as Goku pushes himself and they push each other to get stronger and stronger. And also I think one of my favorite moments in Dragon Ball uh, Super is uh, when they first introduced Beerus and you can see like Vegeta acting like all like nervous and almost like a little pussy, uh, little pussy whip boy. Like making sure Beerus doesn't get mad. So I really like that change in character development, in, especially the other way uh, areas of Vegeta. Like he gets a family, has a wife, has a kid, and stuff like that. You see him as a husband and father too. But just to think back, like my point is that he was a big like I'm stronger than you. I'm uh, saying elite and stuff like that. I think another example, I'm spacing out the name, but uh, and Mob Psycho. I forget the blonde kid that loses his hair because he kind of had the like uh, attitude too, like he's better than them and tried to beat up mob in that big fight. That was a pretty good episode too. And he loses all his hair and gets a wig, but he feels like uh, he become a good ally, even a good friend to mob and stuff like that. So that's what I kind of like notice sometimes when I'm watching anime. It's like this annoying, like snarky, like oh, we're better than you kind of stuff, and it's. I guess sometimes it can be like them being competitive and things like that, but it feels like hey, if they're for the same cause, like I feel like like get that in Demon Slay, like kind of like talking to like the uh, younger ones, like uh, newbies, like don't do them. Like no, you want them to get strong, you want to support them, you know. Same page, but it's been a while since I watched some of those animes. But I also kind of bad at watching animes, like I don't really rewatch them. But yeah, I gotta find a good source for anime and stuff like that too it's one thing i kind of want to talk about on this podcast as well is my love life or lack of a love life because i've been watching that new video from a little small channel you might have heard of her uh jd animations uh, i'm probably gonna get this wrong but it's like uh well asexual and a more i forget i, I always see like uh a short as a more ace as in like the more like not being interested in romance at all 
and like I said earlier, uh, yep, definitely gay. Like I don't have any like questions with my sexuality, but I, I just feel like in terms of love life, love interest, and pursuing it, it's been not much going on. And I feel like I have my hangups too. I'm not sure, you know, if it's kind of like being on a, a spectrum of asexual, but it's also weird too because like, yeah, sex is great and that, but I, it's been over six years to be honest. And I don't know, I almost feel like I'm an incel. and <laughs> I'm not sure if that's good or bad or what, because you know, I kind of want to talk about that too. Like not that I'm actively trying to like, oh, this, this label fit me or whatever. But I feel like I've been really quote unquote celibate involuntary just because a lot of times in my mind, I just kind of feel like, hey, I just don't want to like get it on just to get it on. Like I got to a point that I just kind of want something more like more stable, more monogamous, more real. And not to like knock anyone who is, you know, hey, sex is great, very sex positive because there's been times in my life where I've been kind of more wham bam thank you sam but i know i just feel like it's not really worth it or all that but i, I feel like i also got to have like self-esteem and insecurities as well like i kind of feel like you know i want to feel like i'm worth it or worth sticking around and stuff like that so i don't know it's kind of like weird because it's kind of hard for me to feel things when it comes to putting myself out there like i i can't even remember the last time i actually been to a, oh i went to a bar on things I can't remember when the last time I got into a bar because maybe it was Christmas Day because when the bar does like it occasionally does food for holidays and I was trying to think of a Thanksgiving or Christmas but I think it was Christmas Day like when they got a little meal spread but it was just me and my roommate and there was other two but I didn't really interact with anyone because I can't remember the last time I actually went to a bar and all that but I'm kind of like relying on those apps and I say relying but it's just like not much going on and not to like say, oh, poor me, I'm not like attractive or good enough. It's just like, I just a lot of times just don't feel things. And sometimes I just feel like if something did happen, it would eventually like, I don't want to say like turn out bad, but just not work out. Not to be like most negative about it, but I feel like I just, and then sometimes like I just don't feel it too. So I feel like it's not fair to like go along with somebody and go on a date if you initially not really feeling it and i don't know it just kind of feels weird sometimes like i know like going back to like the incel kind of label because i feel like a lot of times when people talk about that like they talk about it in a negative way like they think these incels are these like jerks online or jerks like hey babe it was nice to you not gonna sleep with me like fuck you bitch kind of stuff like that so i'm not sure if like I feel like a lot of times, like, the mindset when it comes to incels is them having an attitude problem or feeling entitled um, when it comes to receiving romance and sex and stuff like that or all that. But I just kind of feel like I've been celibate, but it's not that, like, I don't want it. It's just that I just really hard for me to find the right things or the right opportunities and stuff like that. Because I feel like if I absolutely really, really wanted to, I can, you know, get out there and get off or whatever. I mean, it's like, I don't talk too much about my personal life and I don't know, but it just feels like that weird place. Like, Hey, in terms of like my sexual orientation and stuff like that, I definitely know what I am, but not really much is going on. And I'm not sure if that's because of other things too. Like, think of other spectrum when it comes to sexuality like the asexual like it's not that i don't want sex but i don't want to just have sex or i don't want to fall into situations where i walk away feeling like, oh it was just for the action not for me like we can find, probably find someone better like i get in that insecure mindset like oh you know Sure, I may be good for this moment, but you'll find other moments and probably other better moments and probably other moments that you would like to stick with. Like if I'm not good enough to be in a relationship with any, but someone else is, I just feel a little bit less about myself. But I don't know, like the end of the day, like I, I don't get too worked up. I remember like 
feeling more down. I think that's one thing I wanted to say if this helps anyone listening, if anyone's listening this far, but I just got to feel that point about myself that, you know, being single doesn't mean being sad. Like even if you want a relationship or having that support uh, of a romantic partner or life partner, however you want to say it, but it is like, I feel like I'm missing that, but I, it's not that I'm missing a part of me. It's just I'm missing an opportunity to have things a little bit more happier, even though I'm not unhappy. So I think just that they be in that part of your life where, you know, content, but no, and happy, but no, there's other things that you would like, but you want to make sure when you find those things that they're the right things. Because the one thing, like, the good thing about, like, quote unquote being an incel or being celibate or whatever is that a lot less drama a lot less craziness never uh dated a crazy meth head or anything that i had like stuff stolen or property damage and stuff like that so i'm sure you can go online maybe there's reddits or something out there where you find like crazy relationships breakups and stuff like that too because that's the one thing that not to be like all paranoid or nervous or anything but i feel like there's all the bad stuff out there, not to go like or serial killer or stuff like that, but crazy unfortunate things happen. Um, maybe not the worst, but definitely not the best when it comes to like drama, um, trust being broken, property being damaged, stuff like that. So, yeah, because sometimes I feel like, you know, I, I could make the effort more and really push myself out of my comfort zone. And I don't know. Maybe one of these days, like if I get more of the online thing, more like streaming, communicate more. Because that's I think that's also some of my hangups too. Is that stuff just doesn't feel real to me. Like it takes a lot for it to like feel genuine and authentic and stuff like that. Like a lot of times, like I I have a bad habit like blocking, well not like literally blocking, but like blocking out the idea of communicating with someone long distance and things like that. Of course, that would just be like for friends or platonically and stuff like that like i'm not gonna like long distance date i'm definitely not into that i feel like that almost never works out unless it organically c comes to the situation hey gonna be moving closer together not because for each other but just because hey we have this opportunity but now i guess it's gonna hurt to have friends long distance whether it be um other friends that are gay other friends that are gamers other friends that do stuff online Stuff like that, because I have an extremely small circle of friends. Like, to be honest, my Facebook friends, uh, it's less than 50. <laughs> but yeah, it just kind of feels like also thinking about it lately, like my dating life, my love life, or lack of it. It pretty much, to visualize it, just a tumbleweed uh, going down the road. But it's like, I'm not unhappy about it, but know that maybe there's better things out there. But I just don't want to have disappointments and stuff like that and sometimes even it's like things just not working out just kind of like i don't know i want to say like it would take a toll like this could be where things that happen when it comes to potentially dating somebody and things really really don't work out but for the most part not too bad and all that so i guess this kind of wraps up for this podcast for this week and yeah um we'd like to get to the point that p get more interaction with the podcast and all that. I've been also thinking about doing other videos too. Um, I've been doing like, like this gaming stream VODs and even compilations and highlights and stuff like that. So definitely check them out and kind of playing with different stuff too. Because, like I said, uh, I didn't say this podcast, but kind of like what my thing kind of feels like in terms of like doing stuff online, like gaming, is to kind of play what I want and all that. Kind of like revisiting old games, but all that. But kind of you can have it of also checking out some indie games or games in my steam library like i have a habit of buying a bunch of games on steam like don't play them like hey if i am going to play them no i just will just stream it although there's still a lot of games i'll probably just like play by myself because it's kind of like long like rbgs or things like that where it feels like it'd be kind of awkward to only play it uh when i'm streaming and stuff like that just kind of enjoy it to myself Especially when you have that streaming mentality, like, hey, uh, I have a microphone and I'm talking and all that. So, yeah, I appreciate the feedback. And who knows, maybe one day I'll have a big, huge podcast with cameras, like I'll host, and be the next Joe Rogan. Uh, really doubt that. But anyways, uh, 
And the best way to support me is to like, comment, and subscribe. Whether it be on YouTube, follow on Twitter, uh, follow on Twitch. And those links are pretty much always in the links in the description of the video, the about on the channel. I did update the YouTube channel page. You have more of a banner now, so you can even find those little clickable buttons if you're looking there. And also on Twitch. And we'll see what happens down the road. But if you're listening at this moment, thanks for listening. And hope you have a very good day. And catch you all next time. Bye.